Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the universal features of prokaryotic cells, the prokaryotic cell wall, non-universal features of prokaryotes, pili, mesosomes, and then we'll finish with a summary. So prokaryotic cells are slightly different to eukaryotic cells, and actually they are the most common type of cell found on the planet. There are in fact more bacterial cells in your body than there are human cells, because we live so closely with them. And actually if you were to look at them in terms of a proportion, these with the coloured dots here would be the proportion of prokaryotes and this portion of the leg would be the eukaryotes. This is because so many bacteria and different types of prokaryote live in our gut, on our skin, in our airways, everywhere pretty much. We live with them in a sort of commensal relationship where we both benefit from the other. So they're very small cells and they're usually only about 1 to 5 micrometres in length as opposed to a eukaryotic cell, which can be several tens of micrometers. So they're much smaller, and they do have some features in common with eukaryotic cells. We theorize that life evolved from very common ancestors, and so it's expected that all of the cells share some features, but they do have some big differences as well with eukaryotic cells. But some of the things we can see in eukaryotic cells as well are the presence of a cell membrane. There's also genetic material in the form of DNA. And also we have certain organelles like ribosomes. So there are some things that you see in both pro and eukaryotes. The prokaryotes include all bacteria and another type of cell called archaea. So there are three domains of types of cell. There are eukaryotes, which include animals, plants, fungi, some other organisms too. There are the bacteria and there are archaea. And bacteria and archaea are both under the heading of prokaryotes. So some features we've mentioned are common to all cells, for example the cytoplasm and a cell membrane. The cell membrane delineates the edge of the cell, and the cytoplasm is the solution and gel-like substance where all the reactions tend to happen, and it contains dissolved molecules and solutes. They have ribosomes, as we said, which are important for translating proteins. So the ribosome is made of two subunits, just like it is in eukaryotes. And the function of the ribosome is to read mRNA, and from this create a polypeptide, or a protein. The way they store their energy inside the cell is as a glycogen granule, much like ourselves as animals, and in oil droplets as well. So throughout the cytoplasm we see these sort of suspended droplets, which are either glycogen granules or oil droplets. Prokaryotes do have a cell wall, which is common in some eukaryotes, like plants, but it's absent in animals. So the cell wall lies just outside the membrane, as it does with plant cells, and you can see here that it's delineated by the yellow colour. It's the outermost structure, usually. But it's made of something different. Unlike the plant cells, the prokaryotic cell wall is made of a polysaccharide known as murine. It's also called peptidoglycan, so make sure that you realise these two are the same thing. But importantly, it's not made of cellulose. So a plant cell wall is made of cellulose, but the prokaryotic cell is made of peptidoglycan. So this would be a peptidoglycan cell wall, just outside of the cell membrane. Murine or otherwise known as peptidoglycan, is a polymer made up of polypeptides and polysaccharides. The cellulose in plant cell walls was made of polysaccharides only. In the case of murine or peptidoglycan, it's made of polypeptides and polysaccharides, so polymers of proteins and polymers of sugars. So for example here we can see a polypeptide, a chain of amino acids, but we can also see polysaccharides and together, and the combined mesh of a series of polypeptides and polysaccharides makes up the cell wall, and we call it peptidoglycan. Another way to remember the name is that peptidoglycan has both the word peptid and glycan in it, which means protein and sugar, respectively. The purpose of the cell wall is very similar to that of a plant cell. It protects it from mechanical damages, or forces, and changes in water potential, so it resists certain forces acting upon the cell in harsh environments, and also, if the water potential outside is very high and water starts entering the cell, it stops it from bursting open. 
and the cell wall also has to be able to be broken down during cell division. In cell division, the bacterial genetic material copies itself, but obviously we need to allow that to make two new cells, which are daughter cells. And in doing so, we need to be able to split the cell wall down the middle, and it has to be therefore able to break down. And this is coordinated by the simple but still present prokaryotic cytoskeleton. So remember the cytoskeleton is a skeleton of a cell made up of multiple filaments and tubules, and this is what helps break down the cell wall at either end so that we can divide each cell into its own entity. So some features of prokaryotes aren't present in all of them. They're only found in some species. So the cell membrane and the DNA and the cell wall are found in all prokaryotes. But there are some that aren't found in all prokaryotes. Some of them have a tail-like structure called a flagellum. And a flagellum sticks out like this, very much resembling a tail. But this is the general structure, and the correct name for this is a flagellum. It's not a cilia or a unduly podium, which are different structures. They look very much like the same as the tail of a human sperm cell, but they do have different chemical structures. So these are not the same things. Some prokaryotes have a waxy capsule that lies even more outside of the cell wall. This gives extra protection. So here we would have the cell wall and the membrane just inside. But outside, some of them have a waxy capsule. And it basically acts as a kind of surrounding layer. And it's very waxy, which means it has particular properties. The waxy capsule can help protect the prokaryotes from being detected by other cells. So usually our own cells can detect pathogens through interactions of their proteins onto a receptor. But if the pathogen has a waxy capsule around it, it can stop this interaction from happening and therefore the cell doesn't know that this is a foreign particle. The capsules are also important because it allows bacteria to stick together. So a lot of bacteria don't exist on their own, they actually group together in bunches, and this is allowed by the capsule. By grouping together they can share nutrients, share genetic material, and they tend to have a better chance of surviving. So sticking together increases chance of survival, and they stick together via this waxy capsule. Another structure found in some bacteria or some prokaryotes are the pili. So they help stick bacteria together just like the waxy capsule did. Pili basically are these projections that stick outside of the cell and they can help link to other cells in a sort of connecting way. They're basically described as hair-like projections made of protein extending out of the bacteria into its surroundings. So these are the pili. Finally, bacteria have another organelle known as a mesosome. These are basically infoldings of the cell membrane that surrounds the prokaryote. So remember the cell membrane is given by this green layer here. And just like the inside of an organelle like a mitochondrion, it can fold in to increase its surface area. So this area would be the mesosome. And it sort of sticks into the cytoplasm. The purpose of it is to carry out aerobic respiration, so respiration with oxygen, similar to the mitochondrial cristae. So remember, looking at the structure of a mitochondrion, the inner membrane folds in to these finger-like projections, and these are called cristae, or crista is the singular version. And on the crista, we see all of these different proteins which take part in aerobic respiration. This is exactly the same structure, only it's using the cell membrane and not an organelle, because these types of cells don't have any membrane-bound structures inside the cell. So the cell membrane is this red line, it folds inwards and forms these highly folded structures which have a great surface area and it can do aerobic respiration using oxygen and this would be the mesosome. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.